Welcome back everybody. Look at this. We're in kindred spirits again For me, I think it's been a year and a half maybe since I last played this I completely forgotten that, that I was gonna do the bonus scenes and How many bonus scenes we still have left? I completely forgot. I think I did one bonus scene before Yeah, I messed up because I think it's the apple here these apples that are the app the bonus scenes anyway so yeah we're gonna finish that off um let's get into it hopefully i can remember the stuff that's happened i i really i'm struggling to remember people's names here um it's also hard because this is kind of like the bonus scenes kind of go back in time as well so i have to remember what part of the story they're in anyways let's just get into it i should have been hungry my lunch should have been just as good as always and yet I just couldn't seem to concentrate on eating. There are so there are a few open rooms on the second floor of the oh boy, not this again. Kumoniyagura Kumomi. Oh man, I'm pretty sure I used to know how to pronounce that and now I'm just completely lost. No, that won't work. People are always going in and out of there at lunch and after school. Then somewhere behind the inner building and also wouldn't work. It's going to be the rainy season pretty soon, and I bet we'd meet people. Ihara Senpai knows over there. Hmm. So this is Maki. I think this is her trying to think of a place she and her Senpai can uh, be alone together. I believe that's what she's trying to figure out. Lunch break. When everyone chats with their friends or reads magazines and munches down on their lunch. Lunch is always a release from the long morning classes, yet I was feeling inexplicably gloomy. If you think about it, the school's really big. It has a ton of hiding places in it. But I can't seem to find anywhere two people could be together without being discovered. A place for just the two of us, Ihara Senpai and me. No matter where she is on campus, Senpai's always busy and constantly getting new requests from people. And as soon as we work, as soon as we have work to do, we put off being together to do it. On top of that, Senpai and I go home in different directions. I want a place where we can relax while, while we're at school. Just the two of us. Naki-san. But now that I've really started looking, I just can't seem to find anywhere that'll work. Or is it weird to worry about other people so much? Maybe we should just be open about it, and no matter what people say, Ahara Senpai and I... Okay, I guess I wouldn't be going through all this trouble if I could really do that. And I'm starting with Senpai as friends, anyway. Maki-san? Yes? Is something wrong? Yes. After a pretty stupid exchange, I realized that K <laughs> Komano san from the seat next to mine had addressed me. No, oh, I- uh, I'm sorry, I was just thinking. Um, what did you need? Did you say something to me? Hmm, I haven't said anything yet. You've just been spaced out for a while, Maki-san. You're not eating at all, do you feel bad? Just as Komano san had said, I appear to have suddenly stopped eating the rest of my lunch. She must think I'm really weird. Staring in the space, stopping halfway through my meal. N no, that's not it. Since I didn't know what sort of face to make, I chose to smile a little. Komano san stared straight at me, with eyes like she could see all the way into the depths of my soul. Like she may have been a little mad? I don't think she was, though. From our conversations together, we've been close enough that I think I can read her. She was probably just too worried to ignore me with how I was acting. I was just spacing out a little. Ah, your lunch is always, like, so pretty. Kamana said it always looks like really balanced and stuff, too. I tried to steer the conversation somewhere else. Maybe a little too obvious, but it really was true. Whenever I see Kamano-san's lunch, it's always got a ton of variety and looks good, and there are a lot of it, like you might expect from someone in an athletic club like her. It looks really tasty. You don't make it yourself, do you? Hmm, someone else always makes it for me. Your mom? Nuh-uh. 
From what Kamena-san told me, her lunch is made by a second year student, her childhood friend who lives next door to her. What's with that? It's wonderful. If I could make lunch for Ihara senpai like Kometa sen and this senpai of hers, what would that be like? I always had my mom make my lunches, but if we could eat a lunch like that together, somewhere where we could just the two of us could relax, I really need to find that place, our secret place. Thinking again? Uh, no, er, uh, yeah, actually, a little. I'm thinking, I guess, or I'm wondering. Hmm, wondering? I was kind of wondering if there was, like, an unpopular spot where people could stay out of sight on campus somewhere. I'm looking for one, but I'm having no luck. Now that I think about it, what am I- what I'm saying sounds kind of wrong, doesn't it? If I came out with all that all of a sudden, people would be surprised, right? Or they'd think I'm weird. But I've been working up- I've been working on this for days and I haven't come up with anything or found anywhere. Maybe I'm just grasping at, at straws, asking Kamano-san about this, asking for her advice. Kamano-san's kind of quiet, and you'd think she'd be unapproachable, but she's actually pretty easy to talk to. Somewhere unpopular. Kamano-san looked away from me like she was considering it. When she does that, she kinda looks pretty. But that pretty image of her was shattered by the words she said next. Like in a tree? A, a, a tree? There's a lot of mosquitoes this time of year, though, but there aren't any... <laughs> when you get up 20 meters. 20 meters? Like there, the Enoki tree next to the building. Or like on the roof of the... Oh boy, not this one again. I'm just going to skip that word and maybe figure out how to say it next time. There might be a blind spot on the opposite side from the Hoshiken building. Mm, but it might get super hot soon. Sorry, I, I don't think I can climb up anywhere that high. Hmm, really? Then, like in a hedge by the inner building. Some are pretty big inside. I bet nobody could see you from outside. In a hedge? Have you hidden one? Hmm, but there were a lot of mosquitoes and a spider web got in my hair. That was bad. When Kamana Sense started to list her suggestions, I thought maybe she was making fun of me, but I may have underestimated her. Kamano-san holds her expression so well it's hard to tell, but it really doesn't look like she's joking. Maybe this is Kamano-san's idea of a serious answer. But the level of difficulty of her suggestions is a little too high, I think. I might be able to get into some of those places, but I really doubt Ihara-senpai good. Kamano-san's got this sharp image to her, like a Shiva or a Kai. Some kind of Japanese dog, but from what she's saying now, it's more like a cat? Does Kamenosen wear her tracksuit all the time because it's easier to move through places like that? No, that couldn't be. Hmm, there's... Sorry, I can't think of anywhere else. Uh, that's fine, really. I know I asked something pretty weird. Don't, don't worry about it. I'll tell you if I find anywhere else good. Thank you, but really, don't don't worry about it too much. Now that I think about it, we're both new students. It's only natural that she wouldn't know much about the school either. Yeah, I still don't know much about the Shirojo, about this school. I'm sure there's a good place somewhere. I should do some more looking. But I feel a little better after telling Kamenosan about it and hearing those ideas. I think. It was good just learning that there are places in the school I don't know about. I'm glad I talked to her. I think <laughs> I'll just think about it that way. That's right, so these bonus scenes, they go through the other characters' thoughts and stuff. I forgot about that. And uh, that was Mackie San being her usual self there. All right, uh, extra, ooh, Mackie, first time. I guess we'll just start with this one here, because it's first. <laughs> That's a good way to do the ordering for things. Oh, Yuna! I have no complaints at all about the time I was spent alone with Sachi Chisan. But it's really been so long since I've known anyone else, someone I can even greet in the hallways. I didn't know how much I missed it. Oh, Megami. And I even got a response. I suppose I'm happy about that. I I'm not going to tell Yuna that, though. 
What is it? Did you... Did something happen? Hmm, uh... Yuna whispered to me, bouncing her vision between the people around her. Well, I can't tell her that I said hi. I just said hi just because I wanted to. She's got to respect me. Well, but I can't really think of anything to tell her. I usually say pretty much everything I need on the roof. Yuna cut off my thoughts before I could figure out what to say. Come to think of it, I've been meaning to ask. G go on. Well... We were already at the end of a deserted hallway, but Yuna lowered her voice to be almost inaudible. She hesitated for a moment, an awkward look on her face. What? What is it? This is kind of hard to ask, but come on, if you're going to ask something, ask it. She's not going to say she's fallen for Sassy Sachi said too, is she? Declare herself my rival? Uh, I knew this was going to go bad from the start. It's impossible not to admire Sachi san what are- why are you two so set on this? Well, unregrettable first time thing. Like if- if you don't know how to do it, couldn't you, you know, just try? You love each other, don't you? Really now, don't scare me like that. I thought it was something serious. I didn't think it would be that, of all things. Why don't we just- why do we want an unregrettable first time so much? Why can't we just figure it out if we love each other? You're naive, Yuna. You can't take first times so lightly. They're dangerous, you know? You gotta use caution. Huh? You'd think she'd be a better than a vacant stare. Fine, I guess I'll have to teach her. Kids these days don't know anything. Listen, when I was alive, there was a girl in my class who was pretty mature. She had dyed hair and a super long skirt, and she was going out with a punk. In class, she was kind of a loner, but if she started talking about something, all the girls in the class would cool out and listen to her. Me too. Of course, I couldn't just quietly eavesdrop when she was talking about first times. I asked her a few questions, too. What I learned from her was that first times are totally dangerous. How exactly are they dangerous? Yuna's looking at me like... She like, she kind of gets it and kind of doesn't. Hmm, well, fine. I went close and whispered the details into Yuna's ear. I knew no one could hear me, but it wasn't the sort of thing you could just say out loud. Well, first her boyfriend, and... But then, you see... Uh-huh. And like that, she had to... But there was so much, so... The next day was... And still, she had to just... But it really hurt, and mostly it was just a tough, exhausting experience. I'm kind of glad most of that was uh, edited out. <laughs> I don't need to know those details. I backed up a little and looked at Yuna. She was silent, the color drained from her face. Isn't that tragic? I guess so, but isn't that because she was with a guy? Maybe, but maybe not. If we tried and it doesn't work, what do we do then? I guess, but we only get one first time. If we screw it up, we'll never get another. When I told Sachi said this, she said we should be careful. So, Sachi said and I are a loving couple, bound by perfect bond. Our first time has to be perfect too. Yes, really, it's true. I almost want to applaud myself. It would be the same even if it weren't so perfect. Isn't it only natural the first time you become with one with your lover should be a wonderful experience to fondly remember for the rest of your life? Yet Yuna just nods to herself like always, with that boring look on her face that makes it impossible to get guess what she's thinking. Well, I get it. Thanks. What a dull response. Then she went off, saying class is gonna start. Well, whatever. Yuna had a look on her face like, I guess that makes sense. She's still such a kid. One day she'll understand what I meant, and then she'll regret not take thanking her senpai in life here. Senpai, eh? I also, I, it's also a really long time since I've had anyone to talk to as their senpai. It doesn't really feel like it since I still look like I did back then. But I'm like a generation wiser than she is, and I'm a hundred, no, two hundred steps ahead of her when it comes to experience and love. Senior and junior, huh? Yeah, that doesn't feel so bad. She's pretty useful junior to have around, I guess. 
Though it's lame that Yuna doesn't seem to think of me as her senpai at all. I'll just have to keep explaining my wisdom to her like this whenever I see her. I've got lots of things to teach her as her senpai, and I've got to keep an eye on her to make sure she doesn't make a move on Sachi-san. That's kind of a tongue twister, Sachi-san. It's tough to say. Anyways, that actually clears up kind of a bit of a plot hole I had with this entire game was <laughs> why don't they just do it themselves? Why do they need to get these other couples to show them how? But that kind of makes sense now, I guess. So, wow. That's good we know that. And now this is Maki-san, but this is not a picture of Maki-san. This is, um, I don't know who that's a picture of. I don't remember. Oh, yes, her. I finished eating my lunch and set out on my usual patrols. It's part of my duties as a member of the disciplinary committee, but really I just like getting a little exercise after lunch. Helps with digestion. It's pretty nice to walk around the outside of the grounds by the pool or behind the gym, slowly weaving through the shade where there aren't too many people. Hmm. I stopped when I noticed someone in an unpopular spot behind one of the school buildings. A first year back here? That's unusual. Hmm. The first year was moving around restlessly, peeking into the shade and stretching to look over the fence. Is she looking for something? But then memories of her small frame running around energetically flash back to me. I think she's a first year who who is close to Ahara Senpai and just joined the beautification committee. Ahara Senpai supports the school, handling various miscellaneous tasks every day. I respect her, but I also worry a little that she takes on more than she can handle. So when I heard there was a first year helping her out, I was both relieved and a little interested in this new helper. Looking for something? Uh, huh? Her back went stiff as I called out to her. It's Dick with a reaction. People have when they run into me, the disciplinary committee demon or school gate guard. Uh, uh, hello, are you senpai? But the first thing she did after unfreezing was bow her head and greet me properly. My name is Mackie. I'm a first year. I know you're friends with Ihara senpai, right? Friends. She parroted, her cheeks flushed. She looked scandalized, but happy. So, are you looking for something back here? Um, yes, uh, well... Do you know any quiet, unpopular places, Iryu Senpai? Unpopular places? I yes I'm sorry for asking something so weird. Hmm... It was indeed a weird question, but I decided to show her the places that came to mind as I continuation of my patrol. It was a good opportunity to assess Mackie Sant's character, but more importantly, I just liked how she wasn't too time timid around me. I brought up a few different conversation topics as we walked, her impression of the school, what she thought of classes, which subjects were her favorites. She still seemed nervous, but she gave me good answers. The beautification committee really does all sorts of things, doesn't it? Thanks to that, I know a whole lot about the school now, even though I just started here. When I brought up the beautification committee, she grinned and started talking happily about it. What sort of things other students asked her to do, and how she did them. Hmm, she seems quite motivated. From her excited quick tone, I thought she seemed sincere, a bit impetuous maybe, but I liked her enthusiasm. But there are also a lot of things I'm not used to and not good at yet. I want to be able to do everything really efficiently, like Har Hara Senpai does. Ihara senpai, eh? I think it'll take a lot of work to get up to her level. I couldn't help muttering something discouraging when I imagined the virtuous Ihara senpai with all of the burden she takes on to herself. But Maki-san nodded, if anything getting even more enthusiastic. You're right, how on earth am I going to do it? She'll do anything for anyone really quickly without complaining at all. I think she conducts herself well. Right? She's smiling like she's the one being complimented. No, she looks even happier. She must be really enamored. But her adoration, is it really just that? She's really nice to me too, and she's always really considerate. Like, are you tired? You can rest, even though she's the one who works the hardest. 
Hmm. It's the first time I've met someone like her. She tacked that last line on after all her enthusiasm. She muttered it to herself and my suspicions were confirmed. Her feelings for Ihara Senpai have gone long past simple adoration. I wonder how Ihara Senpai feels. I wondered if she was aware of Maki-san's feelings, and if she was, what she thought of them. That won't be an easy road. I imagined some scenarios, though I knew it was rude of me. It's pretty far from the school buildings out here, but that also makes it quieter, and it's a blind spot from the windows. Hmm. I didn't know there was a place like this out here. Thank you. Yeah, this might work. It might be kind of humid soon, though. Maki-san glanced around, inspecting each deserted spot we came to. Is she looking for somewhere quiet for romance after all? She walked around each spot checking its view, how comfortable it was, and even taking notes. And she looked dead serious during all this. As long as she doesn't do anything that needs disciplining, I suppose. The worry ran through my head even as I smiled at the adorable sight. <laughs> Those are all the places I know. They're good enough. That was really helpful. Thank you so much. Maki-san bowed her head deeply. She was wearing a really broad grin. I must have won her favor by sharing her those spots. It was hard to give her a warning, but well, I had to. The truth is the truth. I didn't show you anything particularly smart or go to any particularly trouble. I just showed you around my patrol route as a disciplinary committee member. Huh? A disciplinary committee member will come by here a few times a day, so it isn't as if it's entirely deserted. Ah. Uh, Maki-san froze for a moment, then visibly deflated. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're in the disciplinary committee, and the disciplinary committee disciplines people. Uh, I get it. These places are nice, but they must be unpopular because they're on a patrol route. I think she just said something pretty rude. But again, I found myself endeared by her disappointment. Guess it's not surprising. She was searching so earnestly, so enthusiastically, and at the very end, all her hopes were dashed. Guilt stabbed into my heart. No, there are plenty of places the disciplinary committee doesn't know about, too. It's a big campus. I doubt too many people know every single spot. Even I have some places I'm not too acquainted with. When I realized that what I was saying, I was surprised at myself. What am I telling her? It's a little problematic, considering my position. R really But seeing her face brighten up was a little relieving. W well even if you don't find a place like that, don't use it for anything bad now. What a lenient warning coming from a demon gate guard. Just as I thought when she replied, of course, it looked Less like she'd taken my warning to heart, and more like she'd renewed her focus on finding her unpopular place. Well, that's fine. It's probably Maki-san's character that makes it difficult for me to scold her so seriously. Either because she wears her emotions on her sleeve, or because her enthusiasm is just so genuine, she has a particularly partic peculiar charisma about her. She's an interesting girl. If it's her, maybe. And imagine a Baihara senpai taking on the student body's laziness as her own labor flashed through my mind. The, this passionate girl with her respect and love for Ihara senpai. Maybe she'll be able to change things now that they've gotten so bad. No, maybe she can change Ihara senpai herself. Oh, that's good. Aki is quite smart, isn't she? Picks up on cues very quickly. Well, that was a good bonus episode, and I hopefully plan to continue finishing off the rest of these. There's actually, okay, there's a lot in this month, but by the end, there's not too many. So there's not as many as it may look like. I know I said that last time, probably, when I did a bonus episode that we'll do more. And then, well, it's been a year and a half, so technically, I, I mean, I have until the day I die to finish this. So technically, I'm not wrong until that happens. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time and goodbye.